Yeah, I mean, that would be the force multiplier effect of somebody coming in and actually making everybody around them better just by virtue of the competition. And then you hope that there's the next impact, which is the passing and vision and lines of running that um, improves their backplay. Because you forget that they have like four brilliant centres at Munster because yeah. all four of them have had serious injuries over the last two slash three seasons to the point where they're coming right together at the same time. Suddenly, from having no depth and a paper thin squad, they have depth. Yeah, I think that depth was visible at times last season before the injury struck. And Alan Quinlan, who's often in the studio, like I'll totally go along with what he says that the gap between Munster and Leinster just isn't anywhere as big as people think, particularly after what happened in the summer. Now, I'm very interested to get your take on like, what, what you felt when you saw Joey Carberry at the weekend. But I can tell you on page 22 in the Irish Times that uh, Joey Thornley is writing, Carberry's time in red could extend well beyond two years. And my favourite line in this, uh, particularly uh, for the uh, thigh man I have in studio with me, is this. When Blackrock and the Leinster Academy can each claim some small slice of Carberry, his family and rugby roots are essentially in a thigh, which is not a million miles from Munster. Depending on how he takes to Munster, and they to him, and how in the meantime Leinster progress without him, this arrangement could extend well beyond two years. So, Ger, I uh, regret to inform you, you're from a place that isn't too far from Munster. You're basically a Munster man, so feel free to jump ship at any time and uh, get on the red jersey. I, did, I mean, this was the law of unintended consequences where I was talking about the, the rivalry becoming less fierce. Like, um, y you know, do Munster start recruiting from and offering scholarships to kids who are good in Leinster? Like, that's a fairly natural progression here. Why wait until they're senior players to try and get them? I don't know. It, um, I, like, I think that it was a chronic misstep from Irish rugby to have long term. Um, somebody like Joey Carberry leave Leinster because like he's not going down there and going I'm only doing my two years here and then I'm going back to where I'm from it's like screw you I'm, I'm here now this is my team I'm going to play with Conor Murray like of course I'm going to give up my absolute best and, and actually then I like I'm going to be a professional about this and play for my new team and that's the way it should be yeah completely I, I, think, I think if I think if we accept your point then Irish rugby would have looked worse had they come out and said, well, Joey Carberry's only going down there for two years. How bad would that have made the, look, made the rivalry look? That they're using Munster as a training ground for Leinster players. The fact that he's gone there permanently and that this is moving from one rival to another, I would say is far less detrimental to the rivalry. And I do think, I'd, like, we've obviously had this disagreement before, but I, I, I don't think the rivalry is dead. I don't think the rivalry's been harmed by this whatsoever. In fact, I, I, I can see a little bit of anger there behind, behind your eyes. I, I, I think that this has really inten intensified the rivalry, in your view. Like you're you're going to be roaring from the stands in the first. But there's a derby. Well, I want Joey Carberry to do really well. I want everybody from the tide to do really well. Yeah. Like so now, if like if he scores the winning try, I'm like, well, that's brilliant that he's doing really well. As opposed to, like, it's not it's not the parochialism of sport is one of the best things about it. The whole fact that it is our county's best against your county's best in GEA is something that actually has some remnant of meaning, even though it's a weird patrician thing that we got handed down to us by the Brits as an administrative way of deciding how we're going to make all our rich people have sections of land, right? That's, that's where our county system essentially comes from. And uh, now it's this very important thing in, in GEA. Like the provincial things, nobody thinks of being from Leinster or Munster or Connacht or, I mean, maybe some people think they're from six counties of Ulster as opposed sure. to the whole thing. Like it's a made up sports thing. And you diminish that when you start moving pieces around the board like a chess piece because then you realise that this is a game that's being played by David Nusifora to like make sure that the national team, which pays all the money and makes all the money for Irish rugby, all of the money, comes from our international team, basically, um, you start realising that this other thing is actually far less important. And the, the veneer of this being an important rivalry between two, two clubs gets removed when you start behaving like that because you're engineering it for a different purpose as opposed to the standalone purpose of the identity of the two provinces. But and that's, that's, what, ha that's what happens. So like that, like when you bring well, that's not Manchester United and Manchester City. Like it isn't. It but absolutely isn't. Because they're not based in the initial position. Because they're not of, owned by the same person. Well, there, there is that. But like, do, do, you re do you really think that the most hardcore Munster and Leinster fans are really thinking that way going into the season? But I, like, you're, you're I, I, so some other people must be of that opinion. I, I think that like if you're, if you're from any of those counties now, 
that have players playing from Leinster who have players playing for, for Munster, like you're well within your rights to go, my team is represented by the person from my locality who happens now to be playing for another team for expediency for the national side. Which of these two teams is actually my team? Like if you're a kid in a thigh, are you as likely to have a Munster jersey or a Leinster jersey. I would say you're way more likely now, next year, when you know the next round of birthdays and Christmas par- uh, Christmas presents come up, it's like, well, actually, I want a number 10 Munster jersey. Yeah, OK, so wh- whether or not you agree with that, I think the end point that you can reach from all of that is that it's not going to be a Munster or a Leinster jersey. It's definitely going to be an Ireland jersey because your kid from your locality and their teammates in general are going to probably succeed more than an Ireland rugby team has ever succeeded before. We'll know a lot more in the next 15 months, for well, sure. There's, yeah, I mean, there's two, there's two Thai lads in, um, in um, Munster now, so um, Jeremy Lupin's down there as well. The, the, other, just the, the other aspect of this, so like, the Lunster thing was a real thing for a long time. Like, Di Regan talked to us and very passionately about the fact that like, he identified far more with Munster's rugby culture than he did with Leinster's culture. Ultimately, his son ends up playing at Leinster, and so I think that kind of, that, again, it kind of just goes to show that the personal impact of having a connection with a team is really important. And when you start engineering the, the players' relationship with their province, it stops to mean as much, I think. Like, I completely take your point. I think it's a good point about News of Four controlling all the pieces here. But, like, the whole association... And that's his job. Like, that's his job, and I it get is. it. But, but the whole association with your own team, like, you, that is professional sport. Like, you have to say that is professional sport. And you have to say that the Manchester United-Manchester City rivalry has, to a certain extent, intensified. Not to a certain extent. It has intensified since the money's come into Manchester City. Because both teams are good now. Yeah, like, I mean, there there was more of a chance of you being a young kid in Manchester, growing up, playing for your favourite team, whether that be City or Manchester United, 20 years ago than there is now. Ten times as much of a chance, given the, the global network of scouts that both teams have. But the supporters probably feel more of an intense rivalry with the opposite side of Manchester at the moment. So this idea of your young boy looking up to your heroes for whatever, Leinster or Munster, like that, that is comparable to the situation in whatever, Manchester United or Manchester City. You're not going to achieve that. You're far less likely to achieve that now. But of course, if you're a fantastic young rugby player, well then where do you go? If we reach the point where Munster are poaching young Leinster kids, then that is a kind of a different direction for sure. But, Sorry, but it's not really different. Like it's actually exactly but it's a the further, same thing. It's a further step on from where we are now. And like, are Munster in a, in a position to poach kids that would be destined for the Leinster Academy? Maybe they will be. It's like the success would breed success, but it's certainly going to be happening the other way around. More likely to happen the other way around. Um, all right, the rugby season has started with us having a, a Joy Carberry debate. And well, I, ju- I just had to bring up that uh, that Athia. You're you're clo- you're close to Munster, man. 